Hi, my name is Dan and I'm one of the DT evangelists here at Digital Tutors. In this video, we're going to look at a question from one of our users, PianoWins1, on how we can deal with working with a heavily populated scene. So to illustrate this, I have some buildings from the architectural pre-visualization in Maya course. Now, there are numerous techniques that we can utilize to limit the amount of calculations that our graphics card has to handle when working within a heavy scene that's causing our system to slow down. Uh, we can use things like display layers. Say if we wanted to add this building to a display layer, we could just uh, click this button here to add a display layer as well as adding the selected objects to it. We could call this, say, uh, building B high res display layer since this is our high resolution object now I actually have if I open up my outliner here I have a low resolution version of this building that is basically just a cube so we could easily turn off our high resolution and have the cube stand in here in place as well as maybe adding that to its own display layer as well this will be my low res display layer so that way we can toggle between those whenever we need to. Now we could also, uh, if we have this on a display layer, we could turn this into a template mode, which will basically turn it wireframe. And since it is wireframe, that does help ease on some of the calculations that our graphics card has to handle. Another thing that we could do would be to utilize the clipping planes for our camera. So we could uh, select our camera here, open up the attribute editor, and we'll see the cl uh, clipping plane. So if I s change my far clip to say something quite a bit lower, and as I zoom out, you can see that uh, we're not able to view the objects here in our scene. Uh, but if we're working on something closer, then you know that could be okay. It could help to eliminate some of the uh, issues if we're having some with our system slowing down. Let me go ahead and set this back. Now, uh, personally, in my projects, one technique that I like to use is called a level of detail group. So it, what it does is basically it'll swap out low, medium, or high resolution geometry depending on how close our camera gets to it. So let's take a look at how we can set that up. I'm going to do that on this uh, building here. And I actually have a low resolution piece of geometry, which once again is just a, basically a cube turn the visibility off on that so we can see what my medium resolution geometry looks like a little bit more detail and uh, once again you could always com come in and add even more detail if you wanted to kinda depends on uh, what you need in your project so for now I'm going to turn those off and now to add these to a level of detail group we'll simply select the objects we want in this case I have my high resolution group my low resolution geometry and my medium resolution geometry come to edit level of detail and group so we can see this has been grouped now now let me come in and if I were to come close we can see it's, it's actually appearing here and the reason for this is there's some settings that we can have here in our level of detail group node so if I open up the attribute editor here we can set the threshold for how close our object needs to be in order to switch between our high resolution, medium resolution, and low resolution. Now if we take a look at the group here, we have our high resolution. Um, actually, I have these swapped. The low resolution needs to go on the bottom, and then the medium resolution would go in the middle. So it goes high resolution, medium resolution, and then low resolution would be the order for the level of detail group. So these thresholds here are what we can use to determine when those get swapped out. Um, so these values may not seem like much, uh, but if we come in to display, heads up display, and turn on our object details, we can see this distance from camera. So right now this object that I've selected, which is the building A high resolution group, is about 60, 6,500 Maya units away from my camera. So if I come into my level of detail group, we can see um, how this is being affected. It looks like my, oh, my uh, medium resolution. I forgot to turn the visibility back on. There we go. For my medium and then my low resolution. Turn the visibility back on for those. 
Now if I zoom out, we can see it's turning into our low resolution, medium resolution, and then when we get really close, it'll be our high resolution geometry. So it's a really cool way of switching between these various pieces of geometry that we may have. So if we say we want our, let's say we have our medium resolution here, and it swaps to low, but we want our medium resolution to still be here. You can see our distance from camera is about 2,800 Maya units look like, about 2,500 Maya units. So we could swap, change this to be about 25,000. Oh, 25, Misread that. <laughs> so now uh, we have our medium resolution that's staying much longer before it gets swapped out. Now the last feature of this level of detail group that I'd like to mention is this min-max distance. Now, this is really nice because we can set this to automatically just turn off the geometry once we hit a certain distance. So we, if we turn this on, now when I zoom out, we can see it's just going to disappear once our max distance gets past this value. So if we wanted to come back and say, uh, let's say maybe right about 75,000. Let's set this to 75,000. So that way our geometry will still be visible until we hit 75,000 my units away from the camera. So we can see here it's disappearing at this point. And then as I zoom in, it's going to swap up all the way up to my high resolution geometry. So those are a couple ways that we can help to control the poly count that's visible in our scene by using the level of display group.